Hello and welcome performance management students. Steve Willis here. In this video we're going to look at performance measurement of not-for-profit organizations. We're going to look at question Tonford School from the September-December 2020 exam. You can download the exam and you can download my solution in the description below. Now I'll take you through the exam questions but it's also important that we talk about value for money. So make sure you watch the video to the end or you can just jump to minute 13, about 13 if you want to just see how to deal with value for money. All right guys, let's get started. Welcome back. We're looking at a challenging question. There's no spreadsheet. You can't fall back on numbers and calculations to get marks. You're going to have to earn all of the marks with writing skills. Let me show you how to tackle such a question. First thing to always do, find this verb. Verb is explain. It's not list. It's not briefly outline. So explaining takes complete sentences. We are explaining problems. We're not just listing the problem, so it will take several sentences per idea. So please get in the mi right mind frame. You'll need several sentences to ensure that you trigger a mark. What are we explaining? Problems that not-for-profit companies have, not-for-profit organizations have, because of their multiple objectives. So I would say this is an easier part of the question they're letting you demonstrate your book knowledge. We got four marks. I want you to remember we've got 20 marks in this whole question. If you use 1.7 minutes per mark, that gives you 34 minutes to do the whole question. <clears throat> when you're doing the little pieces, however, we can fall back on 1.5 minutes per mark because you need to read the story, you need to get, you need to plan your answer a bit. That means you got six minutes to do this and that's more than enough time. Remember, one mark will be equal to one idea. One idea will be, gener will be generated with several sentences. So before you start writing the sentences, just write here in the word processor, just write, list out the technical knowledge that you remember. Just get a structure happening. Guys, here's my solution. Notice I've segmented. I've got three paragraphs. Please do that. Please use one paragraph for one idea. I'm also trying to give it as much love as I can. We're talking about a school. So let's use a school to demonstrate what we're talking about. So if I go through my paragraphs, we can say difficult to quantify conflict, more complex. Stakeholder relationships can be more complex. Those are my three ideas. If you just listed them out in bullet points, it's unlikely you'd get full marks. Okay, You would get, maybe if you're lucky, half of the marks, maybe no marks. Make sure you're working in complete sentences. And non-financial are difficult to quantify. Sometimes they can conflict, and they can be more complex. Now, to do a full explanation, I'm just giving an example of a school. For example, quality of education is subjective, more subjective, and difficult to, more difficult to measure than increasing shareholder wealth. Guys, that's a well-developed idea now. That's a good explanation. That's going to trigger a mark. I'm positive that's going to trigger a mark, maybe even two marks. Sometimes the objectives can conflict. For example, schools might have the objective reduce costs, so they make the class sizes bigger, but this conflicts with quality of teaching. Well-developed idea. Remember, you have six minutes to do this, so give it, give it love. Write com in complete sentences, develop your ideas. Also, the stakeholder relationships can be more complex. For example, parents, teachers, and the local government will have different needs, making it difficult for the school board 
to allocate funds, making everybody happy. That's enough. Look at this. I went a little overboard, but I had six minutes, so I tried to polish my answer. Guys, we're looking at easily three marks, a comfortable pass on part A. Moving on to the next part, guys, we find the verb and we see a new verb. Assess performance against objectives. The verb is assess. The verb is not describe or explain. You'll only get the mark when you show some judgment. So you've got to say performance is good or bad, or a synonym of those words. And we've got to use the data. So you only get the mark when you say, use when you show judgment and you link your answer to those numbers. You use the numbers as the evidence in your assessment. We got 12 marks. I need 12 ideas for perfection, six ideas for a minimum pass, eight or nine is a nice buffer. I've got four objectives. 12 divided by four equals three. So if I can get two ideas per objective, that's eight marks, I'm gonna be comfortable. If I can get two or three, I'm doing really well. Let me show you what my answer looks like here. Very important, the verb is assess. I am assessing. The school shows mixed results. Now I'm developing that argument with evidence from the story. On the one hand, exam results shows the, ex the objective is not being met. We see these are dropping from 2012 to 2017. So I'm turning the data into information here. I'm interpreting that data. And they're below the national average. This shows a gradual decline, not continuous improvement from this perspective. That is a really well-developed idea. Absolutely gonna trigger at least a mark. However, I'm using a linking word to shift, to show the mix. However, Pupil, progress, con contra look at that, a spelling mistake, contracts this. You know I meant contrasts this, contradicts this. The markers give you the credit if they understand what you're saying, irrespective of a spelling or a grammar error. There are no marks for spelling or grammar. This metric grew from three to four in the same period and also beats the national average. This metric shows an improvement and also a contradiction. Exam scores are dropping, but pupil progress is improving. Absolutely worth a mark. Class sizes are constant. The ratio of students to teachers is constant, so this is not the factor driving this. Guys there, three marks. Mixed results, evidence from the story to support that assessment. I'll show you one more, then you can check the PDF and you can see the rest of my writing because I'm using the same approach. The school seems to be performing well here. That's my assessment. Am I supporting my argument? We see that pupil progress is improving, which means pupils are getting good support from teachers. We also see the inspection grade has improved to very good, which shows the school is doing better, but still has room for improvement. One or two marks there. Class size is also lower than the national average and constant show it so as they may be getting more support from their teachers than the national average. Two or three marks here. If we err on the side of caution, we're doing great. Guys, that's my approach. I hope that makes sense. I'm assessing, I'm showing judgment, and then I'm using the numbers, which is data, I'm using the data, and I'm turning that into information to support my assessment. You can check out the rest of my answers here. You can pause the screen, or you can check out the PDF. If we come to the last part of the question, again, the verb is explain something. Got to use sentences. It's not briefly outline. Difficulties in assessing performance of schools in Duckland 
due to the qualitative nature of their objectives. Four marks. This is the same approach as part A. Explaining takes full sentences. Four marks, four ideas. One idea takes several sentences. Structure your answer. Before you write, make a plan. Check out my answer. Here I'm using signposting. I didn't do this in the first example. This is a nice, a nice thing to do. It's not going to give you an extra mark, but it's going to make it easier for the marker to follow what you're doing. And it's also a nice discipline for you to get in the habit of. If you think of your headings before you start writing, now you know you're going for three out of four marks. It's a good thing to do. Quantitative metrics like exam, average exam score are easy to measure and present because they are based on numbers while subjective objectives like being well prepared for life or providing a supportive environment rely on the judgment of reviewers which may not be reliable or fair. Also some kind of assessment system needs to be agreed upon and created. That's a well-developed idea absolutely getting a mark if not two. Another problem is who does the assessment? Different reviewers can have different standards. For example, one inspector might say sense of community is strong, one might say it's weak. It's possible they are presented to different groups of students or that they don't have a standardized evaluation tool to make their assessments. So not only is it subjective, but it's difficult to be consistent. And lastly, how to measure. Different stakeholders may view the objectives differently and not agree on the metrics. For example, the Board of Education may assess quality of education according to test scores, while some parents may assess quality by the diversity of the courses. For example, art and languages, as well as science and math. This can make it hard to agree on a scorecard for the school. Team, another well-developed idea. I'm using my technical knowledge and then I am bringing it to life with examples from a school. For sure three marks, for sure a comfortable pass. So overall, this is a very nice looking answer. I've got at least three marks at the bottom, part C. At least three marks, part A. Guys, the signposting could have been an improvement in part A. I didn't do that. Next time I would probably do that. And look at this. So that's six marks and I've got eight or nine marks here. So that's a comfortable pass. Team, the last thing I want to touch on in this video is value for money. The performance management system that the examining team likes for measuring performance of a not-for-profit organization. We haven't seen this ex as of this recording. We have not seen this in section C in the recent exam. So be ready for this approach. Now, if they ask you to assess the value for money of a school, first thing you would do in that word processing document is you would write down the headings of value for money. You put economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. So in the word processor, give them give the marking team three headings. Demonstrate you understand the model. Now, what you'll do under each heading, you will then define that perspective. D for defined. So for economy, you'll say here we're measuring the cost of the inputs. We want to ensure the lowest cost of the inputs maintaining the right quality. Effectiveness is where I would go to next. Now we want to make sure that we are reaching the mission. We're achieving the mission and the high level objectives of the school. Are we educating the children? Etc. Right? So then we go to efficiency. Efficiency is then maximizing the output per unit of input. These ones are going to be compound. They're going to have the word per in them something per something. 
That would be students per teacher, classes per teacher, meals per day, something like that. And first step is to define it under each heading. You'll get a mark for defining. And then you'll go into the data that they provide and you would then suggest metrics for measuring each economy. Here you would do the average salary of the teachers against the national average. Are they economical in hiring teachers? And you could develop your idea further if there are any other clues in the story. Imagine they say it's an expensive, it's a, it's a wealthy community. Then you could say, oh, the teachers cost more here. They're paying higher salaries, but it's a wealthy community. Maybe that's the job market here. Effectiveness. You'll then find metrics like we did in this question. Is the company, is, is the school achieving their, their mission? And you use the data, turn that data into information, and then build up an argument. And then lastly, I like to do efficiency in the middle. And then you will find any compound metrics that you could find. For example, what we just said, students per teacher. And you can also then, to get more marks, these would be, this would be really nice marks. If you need more things to say, you could potentially demonstrate that sometimes there could be a conflict between the perspectives. So efficiency says maximum students per teacher. Effectiveness says low students per teacher. So we get a conflict. Guys, that would be your exam technique and your approach if they asked you about value for money here. Guys, good luck on your upcoming performance management exam.